Welcome to Charter Local Edition. I'm Tracy Young. Our guest is author, consultant, and writing coach, Peter Clover. He joins us to talk about how the recession is impacting the art world, but the strategies that artists are employing in order to continue their passion. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. So what happens during difficult economic times? I mean, most of us go through and they say, okay, look, I have to make my mortgage or rent payment. I have to have food. I have to get to work. So we look at those priorities, but what happens when we think about going to the ballet or purchasing a piece of art? I think we think twice, you know. I think we spend uh, uh, less in terms of, of our cultural dollar, and uh, um, artists, as a result of that, tend to suffer. Suffer perhaps more than most. Because it yeah. ends up not being on our priority list. Exactly. Right. It's called, you know, art is called a frill or some other derogatory term. And uh, I was listening on the radio on the, on the way over. They were talking about the uh, cutting of, of art and music from school right. funds. Right. So sad. And yet what's interesting is that, and it depends on the different communities, but I've seen so many statistics that say two things. One is that when we keep art and music in schools, the grades of those students are actually higher. And on top of that, this nonprofit and art world is actually a big part of our economy. Absolutely. Yeah. So speak for a moment. There's always kind of this unsettling side, I'll say, where you want an artist to be able to be commercial enough where they can earn a living at what they do. And at the same time, part of that thespian artistic nature in them sometimes doesn't come together very easily. Talk about that dichotomy. Well, it's a constant uh, conflict for, for myself as a writer, for uh, most of the artists I know that uh, the conflict between the need to be a responsible uh, citizen and sure. earn a living and, and have a family and all mm -hmm. those wonderful things, and at the same time be dedicated to one's art form, one's, one's practice. And the practice takes time. Uh, most of the artists I know have uh, what is laughingly called a day job. Um, so they're, that's their way of addressing uh, the problems of the inflationary, uh, the um, recessionary times, right. to find other work, because how, yeah. and how do we define what is a successful artist too? Because unfortunately, I mean, I'm going to just say in worlds that people can understand. You know, if you don't happen to be a lover of fine art, is that we see actors and actresses that. Uh, achieve huge sums of money, say $20 million a film, yet there are wonderful actors out there for some reason never have that opportunity. Or same with musicians. Does an artist define themselves as being commercially successful? Does that mean they're a success? I wonder if they have this wonderful body of work that's tremendous, but mm. for somehow never becomes, I'm going to use the word, commercial. This is, this is a part of what my book is about because there are, there are different ways of defining success. And one way for an artist to, to define success is to have gallery shows, maybe a museum show, uh, to have, get reviews and have collectors right. buy their work and so on. And surely this is, this is one way of, of counting success. But for the vast majority of artists, that's not going to happen. And so there, there has to be a, a different way of defining success with, which has more to do with what's happening inside with the gratification that one can get, with the feeling that one, one's work is at optimum, that one is doing one's best work. And also, I think, it's vitally important to find some way of communicating that work. It's not an, I've never been able to think of myself as a writer who does it for myself. And I know that's, that's something of a cliche. But real briefly, people can learn more. What's the name of your most recent publication? It's called Persist, and the subtitle is In Praise of the Creative Spirit in a World Gone Mad with Commerce. Oh my goodness, I'm glad he said that instead of me. But <laughs> thank you so much for your time. And obviously, we can learn more in depth about this by purchasing your book. Thanks for your time, Absolutely. sir. Absolutely, thank you. For Charter Local Edition, I'm Tracy Young. Now back to CNN, HLN. Hello, I'm Congressman Adam Schiff. Flu season is just around the corner and the H1N1 flu is still with us. Have you thought about what to do if you or your family gets the flu this fall? www.flu.gov has the latest info on H1N1 with basic tips on how to stay healthy and checklists you can use to start planning in case you or a loved one gets sick. Know what to do about the flu by visiting www.flu.gov today.